Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abba, Father, we come to you right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, we thank you so much for another Shabbat. We thank you so much, Father, for bringing us to your, um, just your, just your, here right now, Father. And I just lift up our shepherd right now as he speak. Pray that you would decrease him so that he may speak your words. Father, use his mouthpiece as your mouthpiece, Father. Go before this message, Father. I pray that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see the things that you have to say to us here now in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. It's been a wonderful feast, hasn't it? Y'all make sure y'all gonna press to be back again next year. Hallelujah. Set your affairs in order now. Hallelujah. Everybody should be encouraged, be ready to go through the debt season, run through a troop, leap over a wall. Is that right? Should be good to go, huh? Hallelujah. Everybody should leave it here edified, delivered, strong healed. Set free. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. All right. Pastor Rufus is going to give the message today. All right. Hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah. Bless the most high. All right. Give me two seconds to get set up here. We're going to get this going. Everybody doing all right? Yes, sir. Everybody encouraged? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Praise you Hallelujah. Man, man, man. Ooh, we. I see some of y'all been going around here laughing at your pastor. Watching that video of me shell shocked up here over and over and over and over again, huh? That's, that's funny, huh? That's funny. All right. Now I'm in the pool pit. We're going to see who laughs on that. I <laughs> can do it like that. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Uh, I love messing around with my family. love joking with y'all. But um, the word of Yah is serious. Hallelujah. The word of Yah is very serious. Uh, for those of you that uh, care about this type of thing, um, if you want to put a title on this thing, you could call it uh, blame shifting. Blame shifting. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right. <clears throat> Y'all all been enjoying uh, the feast and everything that's come with it. Um, Straightway Indiana, they put out their, uh, what do you call it, their second little album volume thing that they do, right? And we got a chance to get that right after atonement. And I know that a lot of y'all been singing all those praise songs. So we're going to sing one more of them. Hallelujah. And this one of all y'all can get in. <clears throat> oh, how I love his name. How I love the name of Yahweh. Oh, how I love his name, how I love the name of Yahweh. Choose you this day whom you serve. As for me and my house, it's Yahweh. 
choose you this day whom you serve. As for me and my house, it shall work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Praise y'all. Hallelujah. Now, I started off with that song because there's some extremely definitive words in that song, especially there at the end where it's saying, as for me and my house, we choose in Yahweh. Hallelujah. So that's a declaration that any of you can make. But definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, been fighting this voice thing all week. Most of y'all been doing the same thing, haven't y'all? But uh, we're going to get through it. Hallelujah. But definitely for you men, um, you men of Israel, making these types of declarations over your house is paramount. You have to be the leader that Yah has chosen you to be. Okay? Um, Teacher Shane, get Hebrews 13. We're going to start there. Because, <clears throat> excuse me. I got to remember I got this mic in front of me. I want to talk about real quick why getting to this point of being ordained, called to be a pastor, is extremely scary. All right? I'm going to start off with that. Why it's extremely scary. Hallelujah. In a, in a frightful, fearful of Yahweh, not in receiving the spirit of fear. I want to make sure we understand that. Hallelujah. Um. Read, Teacher Shane. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as that they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Okay, hold on. They have to give an account. They have to give an account. We all understand that Yah, he's judging the inner reins of all of us, Correct. So he's not just looking down and saying, well, what is this brother saying? What is this brother doing with his actions? Or this sister, or brother in, I should say. He's saying, what is he thinking? What's going on inside his heart? That's very, very frightening to me. Because I talk to people about this all the time, and I ask them this question, and most people actually get it wrong, which I'm kind of surprised, because we're all supposed to be students of this book. Right? And I asked him the question, what did the devil say to get kicked out of heaven? And most people think, and hmm, I was like, nothing. Didn't say a word. He just thought it in his heart. So when I see that, and then I read this, it's scared of a Jesus out you, you know? So I'm very, very serious about whatever level that Yah calls me to. It doesn't matter if I'm a brother, deacon, pastor, elder, whatever. All of that still falls under the category of being a servant. Right? You're still a servant at the end of the day. You still have to be obedient. Hallelujah. Now let's, let's go through some of these. It was some key words said in there. I'm going to give you all some quick definitions, then we're going to get rolling here. All right? All right. Obey. That's the Greek word, 3982. Obey. Greek word, 3982. If you got a carnal mind, I just cuss you out. <laughs> All right. It says to convince, pacify, to rely on, to agree, to assure, to believe in. Hallelujah. Next definition we're going to do is submit. <clears throat> Again, if you're carnal-minded, you're having problems right now. You feel like I'm cussing you out, which I'm not. Submit, Greek word, 52, 26. And it says, to be weak, to surrender, to submit yourself. I always thought it was strange in these dictionaries and definitions when they try to use the exact word you define in as the definition. I never thought that made sense to me. Maybe due to some of y'all educated scholarly folk out there, but that never makes sense to me when it does that. But hey, I think you get the picture. Then the last one we're going to uh, break down here real quick 
is the word restored. Hallelujah. The word restored. That's the Greek word 600. And it means to reconstitute. It means to restore again. Bring back to. Hallelujah. So if we got, if we're going to really break all this down and find out what it is we're dealing with as men when it comes to leading and always blame shifting and putting things on other folk instead of yourself as a leader, we got to see where this thing started at. Hallelujah. So let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. We're going to go to the second chapter. Should be, should be, should be, should be, should be. Something everybody's familiar with. Go to Genesis, second chapter. Uh, Teacher Shane, if you would go ahead and start reading at verse 15. And Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... You shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Mm. Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make an helpmeet for him. And out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see that what he would call them, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Hold on a second. It said that all these creatures and beasts were brought to who? Adam. And what did he do? Named them. Sound like dominion to me, right? All right. Keep reading, teach. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowls of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which Yahweh Elohim had taken from the man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woe, man. Oh, oh, hold on a sec. Oh, hold on a sec. So just like the beast of the field and the fowls of the air, the woman was brought before man as well, correct? And just like he named every single beast and animal and insect and creeping crawling thing he named the woman is that is that what we just read all right now i'm i'm, I'm gonna ask questions all right i'm gonna ask questions today i'm probably gonna ask a whole bunch of questions they're 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 not for you to incriminate yourself though so you do not have to raise your hand but what you need to do is you got to ask yourself these questions you have to answer these questions first and foremost, and then you need to internally evaluate yourself with these questions. Okay? And the first question I'm going to ask you is, who got a problem with that? Who has a problem with Adam being the one chosen to name everything? Okay. Did we, fi did we finish that, teacher? No, sir. Go ahead and finish it up. Because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. And shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. And that one flesh we all understand. That they entered into an unbreakable covenant. Hallelujah. Covenants are created to not be broken. Um, because sin has hit the earth. They do get broken. But man we have been in a continual covenant with woman, all right? With women, woman, whatever you want to call it. We've been in a continual covenant with them. You got your daddy-daughter covenants, right? You got your husband-wife covenants, right? You also got your assembly or what the world called the church and their covenant with the widows or the orphans in that magnitude. 
men have always been charged to take care of women. From the beginning of time, nothing has actually ever changed. Nothing has changed. Now, especially this covenant we're talking about with this husband and his wife thing, because don't forget, we're talking about blame shifting today. We're talking about blame shifting. Let's go to Ephesians 5 real quick. Let's go to Ephesians 5. And we're going to start at verse 22. Ephesians 5. Verse 22. Read, teach. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the master. Okay, okay, okay. Question number two. I'm not going to number these questions because I'm probably going I'm to forget after a while. But I do know it's the second one I think I asked. How many of you women have a problem with that? How many of you sisters? How many of you women? You don't even have to be married to actually have a problem with that. Some people, believe it or not, don't even want to get married because they have a problem with that right there. Remember the words we defined already? Obey, submit. It'll cause you to look at that scripture a little different. I mean, that text a little different. Go ahead and finish, teach. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Messiah is the head of the assembly, and he is the Savior of the body. Mm. Therefore, as the assembly is subject unto Messiah. Who's the assembly subject to? Messiah. So we marry, we in covenant with the Messiah, right? Everybody agree with that? That's a beautiful covenant, isn't it? That's a beautiful covenant. That's the same type of covenant you should be having with your wife. And I submit, I submit that a lot of times it's difficult. Let's use that word. It's extremely difficult for a lot of sisters to get in line with this because they're looking at brothers that are not in line with what this is saying. It's very hard for someone to sit here and tell you to serve me, submit to me, obey me, when they know that you are in covenant with the Most High Yah who created you, right? And you ain't doing that with him. What, what are we putting before our daughter's design? That's a, see, I already lost my count on questions. What, was that number three? Okay, number three. What are we putting, this for the men, what are we putting before our daughter's design? What do they get to see on a daily basis from what we just read over here in Genesis is their head and their master, the one that rules over them? What do they get to see? Don't incriminate yourself. Try to keep your, you know, try to keep your eyes you know, straight forward ahead. You know what I mean? Some of y'all faces will give you up in a heartbeat. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right? I'm trying to incriminate you. What I want you to do is to actually answer that question in your heart, and then I want you to internally evaluate yourself. The best rebuke is self-rebuke. Hallelujah. Uh, teacher. Let's, let's keep reading, teacher. Let's keep reading. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Messiah also loved the assembly and gave himself for it. How many of you husbands, while you're self-evaluating yourself right now, while you've answered this question, how many of you do that on a daily basis? on a daily basis. Not when I feel like it. Not when she made my favorite meal. Not when she did something to earn it. It didn't say in there, only do that to women that earn it. That is the covenant that you have agreed to enter into. Hallelujah. I hope nobody think I'm just talking about marriages.
Because if you are, you are already missing out. I'm not just talking about marriages. Covenant goes a little bit deeper. And again, us as men, we always are in covenant with women in some way, shape, fashion, or form. Now, I know it looks like uh, myself and Pastor Dow got this uh, good cop, bad cop thing going on with y'all brothers and sisters. He just, just demolishing y'all sisters, and I'm coming at you brothers' heads. Well, whatever works. Hallelujah. I, I'm not even going to try to deny it. <laughs> whatever works. Whatever works. Teacher, did we finish that? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Mm. That he might present it to himself. Who he, who, oh, oh, oh. who he present it to? Himself. Jesus. Read. A glorious assembly. Not having spot or wrinkle mm. or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. Ooh-wee. That is a tall task. That's a tall task. Still asking questions, though. How many of you brothers <laughs> can say that? That's what you're doing. How many of you can say when you look at your shires that they fit the bill of what we just read here in Ephesians? When they being presented to the most high. They got spots. They got wrinkles. They got blemishes. Because if they do, it's a reflection of you. It's a reflection of you. Hallelujah. Now, most of y'all know I have four Isha's, women, whatever y'all want to call it. They're mine. How about that? And I'm happy about it. Happy about it. Sister Bonnie, bless you. You and Ahava there there back in Georgia holding it down for the troops. But my other three issues are here. Hallelujah. And I'm going to talk about the one we affectionately call Mama T for a hot second here. All right? I'm talking about Mama T. Because me and Mama T went on. I'm, I'm this type of brother I love. Uh, Y'all know this phrase says uh, kill, two bird, or, kill two birds with one stone. I like doing that. I like Whenever I'm doing something, I can get multiple things done and not just one thing. So when it's time for me to go on an anniversary, I'm thinking, what else can I do to get done, you know, while I'm on that anniversary? So I had not, me and Mama T celebrated a year anniversary. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. And it's been, it's been a wonderful year. She's been awesome. She's been a great addition to my family. Um, that sister really, really loves me. She does. She really loves me. And I'm not going to go too deep into Mama T's past, but, uh, you know, everybody know, man, we had some rough stuff when you come from the hoods, and she grew up out there in the, what I call the weird coast, you know, the West Coast. And she grew up out there in Seattle, right? So let's just say life was hard. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you what put an incredible smile on my face. When I think about what we just read here in Ephesians, right? When I went and took her to Seattle for a week, we met with her sister, uh, her older sister. I believe her name's Connie. And I could see just the glow in Connie's face. It, it wasn't because Mama T walked in with this fine, tall, chocolate, good-looking dude. That was not what she did. It wasn't that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Woo. Hallelujah. I'd be lying to say it was because of that. It wasn't that. But I could tell when she looked in her sister's eyes and she looked at her appearance, she didn't see no more spots. She didn't see no more wrinkles. She couldn't detect no blemishes. That's what it was. I could discern that. I could discern that. That's why she was 
overjoyed. That's why she was glowing. And that's why joy just filled her heart. I stayed watery. And I told her, you're welcome to come visit your sister anytime you want. We'll make room for you. So then, I think it was the next day, I had the privilege and the honor to meet her father, who raised her. I think it's her stepdad, technically, but he raised her. So he her daddy. And her mother. And we met at a cheesecake factory. And cheesecake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna to do a little something, something, a little something. I was, I, was, I was still doing good on my carnivore diet that I'm on. I was doing good. I ate meat, y'all. I, I did fine. But we sat down across from them. And her dad fixed his eyes on Mama T. And I'm not exaggerating, y'all. He had to say in that hour meeting at least 10 to 15 times, he kept nudging his wife, look at her. Look at her. Man, you look good, baby. You look good. <laughs> we, we start talking. We start talking, y'all. And, and of course, y'all know how it gets when you coming out of her. Mama T was coming out of her. She wasn't thinking about her mama, her daddy. She was thinking about Jesus. And when her son-in-law, <laughs> y'all know Brother Caleb. Brother Caleb, they, they back at Bama. They just had a, a beautiful baby, baby girl. So hallelujah. Beautiful baby girl, my grandbaby. Yep. Yep. So when Caleb said, I'm gone, I'm going to Georgia with or without y'all, she was like, I ain't getting left. So you don't have a lot of time to sit down and explain to folk what you got going on and what's, you out, you know what I'm saying? And so she did, she left. So her family had a whole bunch of questions like, basic stuff like this, can we even see you? They didn't know, I'm being honest. They didn't. And some of y'all, y'all been there. When you come out, you gone. My family was asking the same questions. Where'd he go, where, where, where is he? I don't even know. He ain't, leave a, he ain't telling us nothing. One of them asked me, they said, where'd you go? I said, north. That's all they knew. <laughs> That's all they knew. He said, he said, he said, well, he called me the N-word. You in Canada or something? You know, because I was in Indiana, y'all. So you're like, what's north of here? You know, I said, I went, I went to Michigan. He didn't need to know that, though, at the time. He didn't need to know. So they don't really get to know everything. So they had basic questions like, can we even just see you? You know, are we like X'd out your life now that you are part of this faith? And so I start, you know, dealing with and answering all those questions. I'm watching dad watch Mama T. He ain't doing nothing. He barely eating his food. He watching Mama T. And he keep nudging his wife. Hey, look at her. Look at her. You look good, baby. You look good. That's what he just kept saying over and over and over again. And her mother, her mother had that same look just with a little bit more pride and a little bit more excitement than her sister had because now she's seeing her daughter. And her mama just cried and cried and cried. And once I tore down those barriers of, you know, understanding, well, no, nah, no, nah, you could still see your daughter. Y'all can come, you know, all that good stuff. Man, we got up and we got ready to leave that place, man. And that woman just wrapped her arms around me. And, and I'm walking out of it like this because she on me. I don't want to have these 15s crushing her little size two she probably got, you know, because she's shorter than Mama T. So, <laughs> you know, so she little, she little. So, I mean, she wouldn't let me go. And it brings me to this here. I think about what we just read. And I think about the perpetual covenant we in with the Most High. What are we doing? What, what is the representation? What is the presentation that we're taking from these daughters of Zion and presenting them back to the Most High. What is that? How does that look? How does that look? Now, again, we got the daddy-daughter covenant. How does that look? How does that look? Dads, fathers, rulers of your home, how does that look? Take your daughter and shove her out there and tell me you're proud of what you've done what you've developed, what you've trained, because that's what we've been commanded to do, right? Train them up in the way they should go, and in the end, they won't depart from the faith. What if you ain't teaching them the faith? What if you just one of them folk that have on that veneer, you, you, 
You know how to do the, this right here. You can do that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't reminded you of nothing, though. You, you know how to do that. But if I said, bring her up here now and present her to Yah, you'd be ashamed. You'd be embarrassed because you got all the excuses in the world. It's always my job or, you know, I can't get a mother. You know, y'all remember the title, right? Blame shifting. I can't stand blame shifting. If I did it, I did it. I mean, that's just what it is. I did it. Whatever the punishment, whatever the discipline, let it be. Let it be. I'm not going to go and blame nobody else for something I did. I ain't going to do it. But I just think that's the mark of a real man, though. Real men accept their responsibility. That's what they do. So you got these daddy-daughter uh, covenants together. You got these husband-wives covenants. And then you also got this assembly and widows or, 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 or orphan covenant that we enter into. Now, we talked about the, the husband wife a little bit. Let's get, let's get to the, uh, the assembly. Because we all charge. That's not just on the leaders. It's actually over the leaders to facilitate it. It's over us to facilitate it and make sure it's being done. But if I'm here in Tennessee and there's something going on in Wisconsin, I shouldn't have to get up and drive all the way up there to Wisconsin to take care of a widow or an orphan. I should be able to pick up the phone, call Elder Kabir, and he should be able to take care of it. If there's resources or, or, or something he needs, make it known. It's that simple. That's what our job is as leaders. It's our job as a whole, as the assembly, to take care of these people. Now, everybody knows I just got this huge heart for the Daughters of Zion. Um, I don't give them no pass, though. I love them dearly. I do. I love them dearly. I don't give them no pass. Pastor Dow stay on their neck, so I don't really have to most of the time. So, <laughs> But I, I, I love them dearly because I see the journey that they've been on. I, I, I understand what has them in the place that they're in. But I also understand this thing called free will. I also understand this thing called uh, 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 truth. We know what truth is. We've been knowing what truth is as a child. You, you got a little baby, and you say, don't touch that. It's hot. What the child do? Look at you. As soon as you ain't looking, mm. then when they get burnt, now they want to blame somebody. You the problem. You should have turned it, you know, whatever. That's how we are as children before y'all. That's how we are. He gives us all these parameters. He gives us all these laws, beautiful as they are. All these statutes, all these commandments to keep. But we want to try to find a way to wiggle around all those when we think he not looking. Got another question. I got another question. Got another question. I don't know what's the question. Seven, eight. What, what? No, ain't nobody keeping count. All right. How many of y'all actually believe y'all don't see what you're doing? I mean, I have to, I know that sounds stupid. I know that sounds retarded. I know that sounds like a crazy question. But so many of y'all act like that. Like, you go do stuff thinking, well, uh, uh, Pastor Dow don't know. Or uh, Elder Mitchell don't know what's going on. Pastor Corey, he, he, he working out. He, he don't see it. He don't know what's up. He, he don't know what's up. Hey, hey Kabir's making videos. He, he don't see it. He don't see it. Who gives a flip if they see it? Who cares? Did you forget Yah is with you? Did y'all forget? Did you forget that he's omnipresent? So I don't understand this thought pattern, this behavior, that we can do these things when we're not in front of or around people that we put in positions of elevation that we probably shouldn't in our minds. I'm a pastor now. Hallelujah. I'm not Yah. I'm not yo Yah. I'm still your brother. Guess, guess what's going to happen? All right. Say to me, brother, right here. Say, how you doing, bro, Rufus? Say that. 
I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm very good. That's the response you're going to get if you call me brother, Rufus. Uh, say to me, uh, Elder, how you doing today? Man, I'm blessed. I'm excited. This is Shabbat. <laughs> I'm always good on that day. I'm not going to get all sideways. Uh, uh, look here, uh, a little dude. Look here, guy. I'm a pastor now. <laughs> Respect. Honor me. I'm going to do all that. I'm still brother. I'm still elder. I had to tell, hey, man, y'all, y'all give a hand for Elder Kabir, man. That's my brother. Y'all, y'all give a hand for Elder Kabir, y'all. I love this brother so much. Elder Kabir challenges your mind. That's what he does. <laughs> he challenges your mind. <laughs> but he sees my towel today, and he's like, oh, this elder, it ain't yours no more. I said, I'm still an elder. Give me my damn towel. <laughs> you know, just, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm still an elder. Stop it, bro. Stop it. <laughs> are y'all understanding the direction we're going today? Now, we're starting a little slow. We're going to pick up. We're going to have this moment where we get to just get loose, all right? So it's coming. Stay with me. Teacher, let's go to, because we got to look at how all this blame shift has started. Let's get to Genesis 3. Let's get to Genesis 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 13. When you got it, go ahead, teacher. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, as Yah said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We, we may fruit, we eat of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yah said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Okay, okay. Let's stop right there. Appreciate that. Teacher Shane, that was very good animation. We love that. <laughs> yes, sir. Higher levels of holiness. Thank you, Teacher Shane. I love that. <laughs> I don't want y'all to miss it, though. She said, back to the devil, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. How did she know that? Because y'all didn't tell her. I don't, when I read this, he didn't tell her. She wasn't nowhere around. How did she know this? How does she know it? That automatically lets you know that her head told her what Yah said. All right? Stay with me. See, a lot of times we read this word, or y'all read this word. I ain't, I ain't putting myself in this category. Y'all read this word, some of y'all, and you read it like a novel. You fly through it. Now, in service, we got to do that because we'll be up here for 17 hours, you know. But when I read this word, stuff like that, oop, I'm done. Because I want the full revelation of what y'all are saying right there. I think I did that with Brother Darusha. I think I tell y'all the story sometime. When I first met Brother Darusha, we were sitting at his kitchen table. And we was talking. I don't even remember what we was talking about. I know we got on the scriptures and we started talking about the Psalms and I was telling him how Psalms 119 is one of my favorite psalms, right? He was, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This early, yeah. This is when we first come in to the straightway. Yeah, 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 I know that. That's the longest psalm in the book. Blah, 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 longest chapter. Hey, I read that in 20 minutes. I said, no, you can't. He said, no, no, serious. I, I read it all the time. I, read, I can read that in 20 minutes. I'm saying, I can read it. I said, no, you can't. I said, all right, get your Bible. Let's do it. Get your Bible. We're not going to get mine. Get your Bible. He went and got his Bible. His wife was cooking dinner. We sitting right there at the kitchen table. Four and a half hours later, we didn't eat dinner, we did all this, we ain't even made it halfway through. Not even halfway through. I looked at him, I said, I thought we could read this in 20 minutes, brother. He just started crying. What I was doing at that time was trying to show my brother, this is how you should be reading the scriptures. This is how you should be approaching the book. Not like it's some regular book, not like it's some novel. You should be approaching it this way. That's what I was showing him, and hopefully it stuck with him. Hallelujah. All right, teacher, let's get back. Go ahead and finish. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, 
For Yah does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing <laughs> good and evil. I'm sorry. Can you read? I'm sorry, teacher. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, mm. and gave also unto her husband Stop. with her. Stop. Mm-mm. See, we ain't finna skirt past that. Now, teach Shannon how you go back and read that last verse. Just slow down. Read again, please. Then slow down this time. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. She saw it with her eyes, right? We ain't talking about the eyes on her head, y'all. Keep reading, Teacher Shane. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Mm -hmm. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Mm. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Mm. And gave also unto her husband with her. Stop. Where was Adam? With her. She saw that it was good and pleasant to the eye. And she understood that it would bring wisdom. She would be wise. The whole time, Adam's standing right there with her. While this subtle beast called the devil, called a snake, called a serpent, is talking to his woman. Feeding his woman. How many of you have devils, serpents talking to your woman? To your, to your daughter. See, he called in a weaker vessel for a reason. We have to protect them. We got to provide for them. We got to produce for them. That's our job. They're not weak as in feeble. They're just not as strong as us. Physically, mentally, spiritually. Because we was made in his image. She was made from a rib. She was made from a rib, right? She was named by you, right? But the whole time, he's standing right there. How many times have you been in a scenario or situation with your wife, daughter, somebody in the assembly that you're supposed to be over covering and covenant with and protecting, and somebody saying something to them that you know is not of Yah? And because you are a blame shifter, you say, well, uh, uh, that's such, you know, she, she's she's with the Mississippi Saints. She's she not over here with us in, in Kentucky. Or I, 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 that's, that's Pastor Rufus' daughter. You, you may want to tell him. Y'all think I'm going to let something like that get past one of y'all daughters? Right is right and wrong is wrong. I would rather be rebuked for overstepping my bounds in a righteous way than to sit there and shut up my bowels compassion and, and, and not say a word knowing that something is not right. I would much rather do that. I would much rather do that. So the whole time he's right there with her. Let's keep reading, uh, teacher. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened. Mm. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Elohim amongst the trees of the garden. Mm. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and, and, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you was naked? 
Have you eaten of the tree where I have commanded you that you should not eat? Here we go, y'all. Here we go. And the man said, uh, that, that woman you <laughs> gave me. That woman. <laughs> Read, teacher. That woman you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Mm. And Yahweh, Elohim, said unto the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, Oh, the serpent beguiled me and Man, I did eat. This has been going on since the beginning of time. The man threw the woman up under the bus while he sit right there with her and watch her break that command. Allowed her to break that command. And then the woman throws the serpent up under the bus. He ain't doing nothing but talking. You're supposed to have your protector right there with you. Right there with you. See, even when your head, your master, your ruler, your husband, whatever daddy, whatever title he has in your life, right? Your elder, your pastor, whatever title he is, even when he's not present with you, you should be hearing his voice. You should be hearing his voice. When something is said out of pocket, you should be hearing his voice. I don't know how many times I've had sisters come to me and testify. Oh, my God. I, just, I was an elder back then. Elder, I hear your voice. I hear you. Yeah, because I'm constantly talking about these things. I'm constantly warning the saints. I'm constantly keeping it in front of them. I'm keeping them sober-minded. Hallelujah. These things have to be constantly rehearsed. How many times in the book is it saying, remember, 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 remember. It has to do that because you're going to constantly forget. Because your mind is just not stayed on the most high. Yeah. Hallelujah. Like I said earlier, these, these things, I'm asking a whole bunch of questions. Y'all have to answer these questions internally, right, and evaluate yourself. You have to do that. Hallelujah. All right. Um. I had another situation. I was counseling, and, and, and who the saints is is none of your business, all right? So don't be looking around trying to figure out, well, yeah, it sounds like brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so. Get your heart and mind in the right place, because I'm talking to you. I'm actually talking to you. I'm talking to you. But I was doing a, uh, me and Mother Jennifer was doing a counseling session yesterday, and we was late for uh, music practice, because we got tied up and you know just I, I had to finish that before I could come to music practice and I'm talking and this individual brother contacted me like a month and a half ago right and was telling me all these things and I'm just like look do this I like gave him specific instructions if that's what you got going on in your home do this yes sir yes sir yes sir so then we get here to the feast and the brother texts me and he says elder uh, or pastor, uh, you gonna make a, can you make a little time to sit down with me? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And uh, he said, yeah, I'd like to come down there, da, 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 da. And I was like, who with you? Right? Because the instructions I gave him was to put his wife away. Right? I told him, get, get, you got a state marriage license? Dissolve that thing immediately. Separate yourself from her. Because she was doing things that was just flat out unbecoming of anybody. Not just the daughter of Zion. Just anybody. Right? But that was his side of the story. Okay? So, in the spirit, I just felt led to asking, who with you? Is she with you? Now, I hadn't seen her. He answered, uh, yeah. I said, all right, yeah, both of y'all come on down here. Long story short, they get down there. We start counseling. I start going through everything. And I'm telling you, when I was talking to these two beautiful saints, all I heard was what we just got done here. He had an excuse for everything that she was doing. She had an excuse for everything he was doing. She had an excuse for everything she did. He had an excuse for everything he did. I said, you got to be kidding me. But the one thing that resonated to me, I asked her age, and she was like, oh, I'll be 32 soon, right? And I said, when did y'all meet? And she said, I was 15. I said, What? I said, brother, do you understand you've actually had her in your possession longer than she was in possession with her family? Now, you want to blame 
her childhood. You want to blame what mama and daddy didn't do. But she been in your care. That's what I told her. I said, she been in your care. And before, you know, we were talking, you know, a month ago or whatever, a month and a half ago, and we was talking a little bit, and he was, you know, well, we may have to do a, a, a you know, may have to bring you before the elders and blah, 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 all this stuff, right? You know, because I was saying, hey, put her away. She's doing all this stuff, bro. I ain't putting up with that. Put her away. That's what the book say, right? So when I'm sitting there looking at him, discerning him, though, she's full of humility, just, just crying and trembling, you know what I mean? And I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at their beautiful children. And I'm like, uh-uh. And I looked him in the face, and I said, look, brother, I ain't bailing you out of this. Nope. I said, you went against what I told you and brought her here and your children. Why? And he broke it down, and I finally got him to admit that he was hoping it was going to be like, Hey, she get here, one last ditch effort to save the marriage. You know what I mean? So I said, you got hope then, don't you? You hoping to save your family. I said, no, I'm not mad at you for that. I'm not mad. Y'all got 17 years together, bro. 17 years. I want to say five or six beautiful children, right? I'm like, no, I ain't letting you out, bro. We ain't letting you out of this. You had hope. She don't want the marriage to dissolve. The book gives you instruction if she's acting like a heathen, how you're supposed to treat her. Because she's telling us right now she's willing to dwell with you. But I'm telling you, brother, we ain't even got to go there. Because she is a product of what you have influenced her in. And we went through a little bit of their history. We did. And the things that she was exposed to at 16 by him. At 18, by him. At 25, by him. Right? So then, you know, y'all know how, how, how you were when you were heathens. Y'all know exactly how y'all was acting out there when y'all was heathens. So just imagine a heathen couple. All right? And so information get dispensed and come out and, you know, stuff come out. Well, that happened 10 years ago. You know, something happened 10 years ago. Well, why you can't get past that? You knew the state she was in at that time. What state were you in? Where she learned this behavior from? Like I had to break it down and show him, she's following you, bro. She's following you. She is following you. So I said, I'm not bailing you out of this one. You can go back and you're going to work on your family. And you're going to do what's necessary to be the man you're supposed to be. And I gave him instructions on how to properly get deliverance and all this good stuff. And then I told him what Pastor Dow been telling people for years. Desperate people get delivered. I told him both. You ain't desperate enough yet. You ain't desperate. You ain't desperate enough. I had another brother here telling me that, you know, oh, I'm in fellowship. I fellowship. I'm like, the brothers that you with don't feel like you come. They don't think you committed. I'm telling you, uh, 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 elder pastor, uh, 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 I come twice a month. I said, how far are you away from the assembly? He said, two hours. I said, brother, I got brothers driving three hours, and they come every week and on first day, and they're during the week sometimes. So who more committed, you or them? I said, let me ask you a question, because I don't know your life. So I don't know what you got going on. What hinders you on Sabbath from going? Is there something else that makes you stay here and not go with them? No, see, there you go. There you go. But the brothers are looking at you sideways because you ain't in covenant with them. Some of y'all that are like heads of communities and leaders and stuff, y'all understand what I'm saying. When you are fully committed to the most high, you have come out of her, you, you walk in Acts chapter 2, chapter 4 out, you give it all, right? How does it feel when a brother or a sister show up <laughs> at the assembly? And you, you, you don't see them enough to even know their name, barely. But when they're there, they got their suggestions and comments and their thoughts on what they see. That's the worst thing to do. We tell y'all, you ain't been in this thing for, long, for five years, at least shut up. Just be quiet. And that's a, I'm going to make this more specific though, Pastor. That's an active five years. Not just five years being connected, meaning I show up online. 
We talking five years of someone that's dedicated, that's showing up, that we can look out and see their fruit. We can assess you. We can discern you. You know, you've been to some building projects many, many, many times. You've stayed here and helped out and cleaned up the tabernacle or, or cooked food or whatever the case may be. You're, not, you're somebody that we know. Not somebody that if I come in, hey, you know, brother, so who? who who's that, brother? Man, he been with us 10 years. I, I never knew that information you just said there, Elder. You're not with us, and we're not fooled. So when we say that five-year thing, we talk about people that's been active in the ministry for five years. Now, here it is. You got Pastor Dow, the straight way. They've been doing this set-apart thing for 25-plus years. In this ministry, three decades. They don't know something. And you've been in it for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Your first time coming, you got thoughts. You got opinions. You got suggestions. You need to shut the hell up. That's what you need to do. Shut up. Learn something. That's how we've been maneuvering. That's how we've been going forward. Now, this started, we just read it in Genesis 3, right? This is how we got off started. So that puts us in this perpetual downward state, right? Teacher, we finna, we, y'all listen, I'm not going to try to interrupt because I want to get all this out. It's a lot of scripture. Y'all know me. I love reading whole chapters and all that good stuff because uh, I think you just get real context from it. So, teacher, you read. Y'all listen, all right? Faith come by. All right, we finna get the word of y'all then. Hallelujah. Uh, this is the state we ended up in after all this stuff. Uh, let's go to Sirach 26. Let's go to Sirach 26. And teacher, when you got it, just take off. Read the whole thing. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. For, for the number of his days shall be double. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear Yah. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward Yah, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. There be three things that my heart fears. And for the fourth, I was sore afraid. The slander of a city, the gathering together of an unruly multitude, and a false accusation. All these are worse than death. Mm. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. And a scourge of the tongue which communicates with all. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that has hold on her is as though he held a scorpion. Mm. A drunken woman and a gather abroad causes great anger. And she will not cover her own shame. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. If your daughter be shameless... Keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Watch over an impudent eye, and marvel not if she trespass against you. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain, and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. The grace of a wife delights her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. A silent and loving woman is a gift of Yah, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. A shamed face and faithful woman is a double grace. And her con 
continent mind cannot be valued. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. As the clear light is upon the holy candlesticks, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. As the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver, so are the fair feet with a constant heart. My son, keep the flower of your age sound, and give not your strength to strangers. When you have gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with your own seed, trusting in the goodness of your stock. So thy race which you leave shall be magnified, having the confidence of a good descent. An harlot shall be accounted as spittle. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. But a godly woman is given to him that fears Yah. Hallelujah. A dishonest woman contemns shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shame-faced will fear Yah. A woman that honors her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonors him and her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. A loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought out to drive away the enemies. These two be two things that grieve my heart, and the third makes me angry. A man of war that suffers poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returns from righteousness to sin. Yah prepares such an one for the sword. A merchant shall hardly keep himself from doing wrong, and a huckster shall not be freed from sin. Hallelujah. Again, I, I like to read whole chapters because I really think it gives us much more context of what we're doing, and we need to be meditating on it. So, those of you that do like to do homework, put that one down to reread and meditate on, all right? Because you hear a lot of that spoken by leaders and, and, and brethren and stuff, right? But it's something different when you understand the full context of it. The thing I love about Yah is even in the midst of that, you have a choice. You have options. You can choose to be that good woman. And add all of this to Israel in your house. It's your choice. See, I didn't want to just read all the scriptures that just blast the women for being wicked as they are. You know you wicked. But my next question would be, well, what are you going to do about it, though? What are you going to do about it? And you men, you wicked as hell, too. It ain't just the sisters. What I have found out in this long journey and this long walk with the Most High Yah that started in my early 20s, right? That if you lead a good woman, she'll follow. She'll follow you. I know that. So what I be counseling and I be having meetings and, and, and you know, helping saints with their marriages and, and all this good stuff, I be looking with a little different eye because I've been experiencing this and living this for a long time. And then when I look out to what y'all has blessed me with now, I got, I'm, 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 I may mess around and live the, right, right to that 120 because I got four good ones. I got four godly ones. I got four women that fear y'all. I do. And I'm being honest, I'll say to myself, man, ain't no way. Ain't no way I deserve all this. I tell, I tell myself that all the time, and guess what y'all say? 
you right, you don't. You don't deserve it. But I'm giving it to you anyway. <laughs> and that keeps the fear. That keeps me on my face. That keeps me constantly before him trying to figure out answers to take care of, to provide for, and to pour into his daughters. See, I look at it like that. I know my wives all got fathers, right? But I look at it like Yah gave them to me because I know every good gift come from above. And they good gifts. They good gifts to me. They are. Now, they may not fit your bill. You may look at one and say she's too short. You may look at one and say her elbow's ashy or something like that. You know, I don't care. I don't care. They mine. I love them all. I love them deeply. I do. And don't give a two nickels to a rat, whatever you be saying, Pastor. I can't even repeat it. Two nickels to a rat's tail or whatever. Yeah, I don't give a flip what nobody say. I love what Yah has blessed me with. I do. And guess what? I don't just love them in word. I love them in deed. We read over there in Ephesians where we've been commanded in a, in a situation where you're in a, in a, in a husband-wife covenant, you got to lay it down. You got to be willing to lay it down for them. I guarantee you, if I brought all four of them up here right now, they all will be like, yep, 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 quickly. He does. Yes, he does. With tears in their eyes from the fear of Yah. They fear Yah. But guess why they fear Yah, y'all? Guess why? I command it. I command them to fear Yah. You not staying in my house if you don't fear Yah. It ain't happening. It's not going to happen. No. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Now, why? More questions, more questions, more questions, more evaluations, more self-evaluations. Why can I do that? Why can I do that in my house and you can't do it in yours? Why can I do it in my house and be effective, not only for me, but for all of Israel? But you can't. Do you think Yah loves me more than he loves you? Last I checked is one spirit. It's one spirit. It's not a spirit for elder, a spirit for pastor, a spirit for ranger, a spirit for Brother Vernon, a spirit for Brother Scott. No, we got the same spirit. We living in the same body. We won. So enough with the blame shifting, enough with the excuses. Meditate on his word. Let it wash you like it said, like the book said. It is what washes you. The Bible tells you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to get this word in you to wash away the filth of this world. It has to be. Then you will not be a blame shifter. Because guess what? The reason why I wanted to touch on this today is because we're going into the dead season, right? And they can vouch. How many excuses and blame do we hear throughout the dead season? It's my mama's fault. It's my daddy's fault. My dog died. The cat uh, fell out the window. We got all kind of blame shifting. And I'm looking and saying, when are we just going to buck up and accept responsibility? And I'm telling you men, because I don't give, what's the saying again? I don't give a nickel's worth of rat's ass what this world <laughs> says about our sisters. I know for a fact they're the best sisters in the world. I know that. Them the best sisters in the world out there. Them women right back there. And listen online. Y'all the best women in the world. I know that. I know that. Man, you come to this ministry 
and you look around all these roughnecks, and you got 70% men up in here grunting and farting and kicking and pushing each other around doing all this crazy stuff. Book got 27 toenails, and, and, and you got to rub them things? You got to rub them and act like you like it. And here's the a, here's a, here's a, here's a beautiful thing. Let you tell them they can't. Oh, no, please, please. They do. Man, you can't tell me nothing about the sisters of Straightway. Nothing. This is how I view it. And this is just Pastor Rufus here. This is just me. I'm standing by myself. I'm standing on the island by myself here. I ain't throwing nobody on this bus but me. This is how I view it. They just ain't found the right guy yet for some of y'all. Some of y'all got some POSs. If y'all don't know what that means, ask somebody, all right? An abbreviation. Some of y'all got some pieces of shit. Guiding y'all. Now, here, here's the commitment though from leadership. We working on them pieces of shit. If they stand here with us and they committed, are we working on them? They're not gonna be pieces of shit for long. They're not gonna stay in that state. They're not. They're not gonna stay in that state. So you stay quiet, you stay humble. You keep this meek and you keep this quiet spirit about you. A lot of y'all need to just really soak yourself in the Proverbs and the Psalms. Because when he starts to raise up that ruler spirit in him, guess what you're supposed to do? Get quiet. Quiet word. A quiet word turns away wrath. He rafting and raging, acting like a fool. Get quiet. Get quiet. The book worked. I look at these sisters and I say, they just need to be guided the right way. Because y'all didn't call them here to fall away. Now, I know some are. I do. I know it. I know it. I, I like to be what they call a statistic buster. I want to blow all the statistics out the water. Every time I hear a pastor say, man, 50% of them ain't going to make it. Elder. I'm like, fudge. I'm going to do my job. Because 65 got to get it now. 75% of y'all got to make it now. I don't care if I got to move all of them to Georgia. We're going to get it. <laughs> now, keeping it real, though, keeping it real, Pastor Dollar ain't never missed. When he says it, that's what happens. <laughs> I'm still trying to make it miss, though. I am. Because that's something he'd love to miss, though. He would love to say that and then come back. And, I was wrong on that. He would love to do that. He just ain't missed yet, y'all. Sorry. But we're going we're gonna to get it. And I'll be up here telling y'all about it, too. Yeah, he said this, and this is what we did. I'm going to be excited. Man, I tell them in Georgia, they know all the time. I'm talking in Q&A and all that, I'm telling them all the time, we're going to bust stats. I don't know why all of y'all don't make it to the kingdom. <laughs> Georgia will tell y'all. The Southern Assemblies will tell y'all. I talk to them and I say, I don't see any reason why every single one of you cannot make it into the kingdom. You just have to make up in your mind. Many have been called. But only a few are going to be chosen. You just got to tell yourself, I'm part of the chosen. I'm chosen. See, I know that. The leaders know that. You got to know that. You got to understand that. Is it going to be easy? Nope. Is it going to be comfortable? Nope. Is it going to be convenient? Nope. So what? This is temporary. You ain't here forever. The book says it's a blink of an eye. It's like the wind blowing. Boom, that's your life. It's done. It's over. It's over. You look at some of these hoary heads in here, I guarantee you, boy, they think about when they was in their day in their 50s and 60s and 70s and all that, and they think, man, it seemed like yesterday they was 18. It seemed like yesterday. They remember it vividly. It goes quick. It goes quick. Make the best of it. And when you got these promises, that's guiding you. you. You have a cheat code. Any of all right, all right, all right. I, I got to see hands on this one. I got to see hands on this one. This is the one that you can incriminate yourself. I'm going to see how many liars we got in the house. Because all y'all done been to some kind of school. Everybody has. How many of y'all done ever cheated on something before in school, a test, a paper, 
Mm -hmm. See? Everybody. I see a couple folk don't got their hand up. Yeah. A couple folk ain't got their hand up. I get it. 98.7% 98, 98 of y'all had your hands up. Some of y'all just weren't paying attention. It's all right. It's all right. I know I'm going a little hoarse. It's okay. I got you. No problem. But here's the thing. You got a cheat code here that's given to you. Y'all literally tells you what's going to happen. All you got to do is grab this thing called enduring substance. All you got to do is make up in your mind, I ain't quitting. And then he gives you all the ammunition you need to make that proclamation come true. It's called the word. Do y'all understand? Do y'all understand that this word is literally Jesus in written form? Like, do you understand when you hold? Let me hold your Bible, Pastor. Let me hold you. Do you understand when you're holding the Bible? You holding the Messiah that saved you, that died for you, that sacrificed every single thing for you, you have him in your hand. You have him in your hands. And because they didn't have computers and, and iPhones and, and iPads and all that stuff back in the day, that's why you hear Pastor Dow and everybody else tell you it's a little different when you read it from the book. See, this puts you on the same playing field as everybody else. Because the scrolls was written on some kind of paper, and this is written on some kind of paper. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I don't think we get a revelation of that, though. I don't think we get a revelation of that. Now, we was reading this rock, right? Let's go to Isaiah. Come on, teach. Let's get it. Um, this is what we become, y'all. We got to hear this. So, Full chapter. I'm going to listen. I'm going to try not to interrupt. Boy, it was hard not interrupting him on Sirach. I can tell you right now. Ooh, it was hard not interrupting that. There was so much in it. I'm going to do the same, though. Homework. <laughs> Homework. Sirach 26, uh, Isaiah 3. Okay? Those that care, go home, meditate on those two chapters. Let's go, teach. Let's get it. For behold, the master, the master of hosts, does take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the host day of bread and the host day of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancients, the captain of fifty, an honorable man, and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother, of his, the house of his father, saying, You have clothing, be you are ruler, and let this ruin be under your hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against Yah, to provoke the eyes of his glory. To show of their countenance does witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom, and they hide it not. Woe unto their soul! For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say you to the righteous, that it shall be well with him. For they shall eat of the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked! It shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women shall rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead you, cause you to err, and destroy the way of your past. Yah stands up to plead and stands up to judge the people. 
Yah will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For you have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean you that you beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, says Yahweh Elohim of hosts? Moreover, Yah says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore Yah will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and Yah will discover their secret pots. In that day Yah will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and the round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linens and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass, instead of sweet smell, there shall be stank. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-said hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword, and your mighty in the war. And her gates shall shall lament and mourn, and she, being desolate, shall sit upon the ground. Ah, my, my. Ah, my, my. Turn right over to Isaiah. Now, remember, y'all meditating on that, because this is what we have become. This is what we have become. You got homework with Sirach 26. You got homework with Isaiah 3. Meditate on them, all right? Meditate on them. Go right over to Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1. Because Yah, he always, always, no matter what, no matter how bad, no matter how destitute it looks, he always leaves us hope. Always. Isaiah 1, we're going to start verse 2, read to verse 9, teacher. Hear, O heavens, give ear, O earth, for Yah has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. For they have taken, Yah, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are, are going away backward. Why should you be stricken any more? You revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire, your land, strangers, devoured in your presence, and it is desolate as overgrown, overthrown by strangers. And the daughters of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, mm -hmm. as a besieged city. Except Yahweh Elohim of hosts, had left unto us a very small remnant. Oh, hold, hold on a second. What did Yahweh do? Left a very a small, very small remnant. remnant. A very small remnant. Y'all see the hope? You just have to view yourself as that small remnant. Because if y'all didn't do that. You would be like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what you would be like. So he never, ever leaves us without hope. I'm telling you, if you're a part of this ministry, 
you have the opportunity to be a part of that small remnant. Hallelujah. I have to phrase it like that. Because because you got this thing called free will, I can't say you're guaranteed. I can't say it. Because you may choose to walk away from the Most High Yah. He's never uh, left us. He's never leaving us nor forsaken us. That's stuff that, 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 that we do as, as saints. Hallelujah. But a very small remnant is left. Hallelujah. Man, I thank the Father for that. Now look. We got to this state. We've been blame shifting and, and, and denying and not self-evaluating ourselves. We've been doing all this stuff. How do you get out of it? What's the answer, Elder? I mean, oh, I'm sorry. What's the answer, Pastor? What's the answer, Pastor? <laughs> purge. You need to be purged. You need to be purged. Let's define it. Let's define purge. That's Hebrew uh, word 1740. Hebrew word 1740, it means to thrust away, to cleanse, to cast out, and to wash. So when the book is telling you to wash yourself in this word, you purging yourself of everything that don't line up with that word. You casting out all of these spirits that are antichrist against this word. Now, I tell a testimony, and some of you have heard it, some of you have not. Um, I'm not going to go into too deep a detail, but I was so serious when I leaped out of this world and walked down on faith to come into this marvelous light and this truth, keeping his commandments, keeping his feast days, uh, honoring the Shabbat, right? And it got to a point uh, it was a three-year journey for me, for those that don't know. And that journey had a specific goal. It was to find the man of Yah, to find the people, and to find the place where Yah has placed his name. Did I not tell you that when I showed up, Pastor? And as soon as I came driving down that road, I looked at Mother Jennifer, because a year and a half in the journey, she joined me, and I said, I found the place. I found it. And, I, and, I, and we pulled in. I didn't even see the tabernacle up here. I just drove past all of this. Went down the hill, pulled in. Y'all know Pastor's house right there to the right? Pastor Dow's walking out. I don't know if you remember this or not. When we first came, he's walking out the house. He waved at us. He said he turned around and told Mother Carol, look at them Israelites. See, that's one thing. Even in my journey, I hadn't figured out who I was yet. I knew I was a servant. I didn't know I was an Israelite. I didn't know that. I learned that here. I, I did. I learned that here. And it was, it was peculiar to me because I noticed Pastor Dow's speech privately was always about, like, Israelite. We were talking Hebraic stuff. But when he got up in the pulpit, he didn't talk about it as much back then. So me, Always got a million questions. <laughs> Go to Pastor Dow. Hey, 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 why, 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 why is it rolling like this? Why are we doing this? And he broke down for me how he understood that he, he found this out years before that. But he had to let the people catch up to where he was. He couldn't just drop all these Hebraic names and all this stuff. So he said, well, y'all putting their spirit was, I think you said you had Sister Vicky make you a couple garments. And he just started wearing garments like this. And everybody like, what is that? You know, hey, it's my garments. What am I wearing? So he just started preaching in Hebraic garments. And every now and then he said he would just toss in a little Hebraic statement. But just infusion, infu infusing our culture into the people as they could take it. Yeah, operating in such wisdom. And then it just, boom, it just, you know, when he finally started obeying y'all and all these folks, started, it just blew up, right? But that's like one of the biggest things I learned coming here the straight way. Uh, aside from, you know, how to live communal and all that good stuff, is I'm an Israelite. I'm a Hebrew. Yeah. That book is talking about you. So I was like, ooh, I got it now. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Hallelujah. So I'm back on this testimony, on this journey. Mother Jennifer joins me at about halfway through it, uh, trying to find the people, about a year and a half in it. Took us three years to find straightway, right? 
Didn't know I was straightway. We was willing to go wherever. I would have went to the Congo. I didn't care. I'm serious. I would have went to New Zealand. I didn't care. I was going to find the man of Yah, Yah's people, and the place he had his name on. Because I read it in his book. I knew it, was, I knew it existed, right? So, me and Mother Jennifer, we get married, right? And before we get, I got to go back a little bit. Before we got married, about six months before we got married, y'all took me personally through this purging process. Y'all hear our Pastor Dow talk about at that church, he ain't know nobody. He went up there, he went in the corner, and he just started calling out every sin he ever did. Y'all remember that testimony? I had a very similar experience that just happened in my house. And y'all had, he, what he did for me, he brought it all back to my memory. Because I, I did like a lot of you women do. You know how women suppress stuff? Like, well, just, hey, you know, I did it. It didn't really happen because, you know. No, no, it happened. It happened. And I had done that. So he started bringing back all these just terrible things that your pastor did back when he was a knucklehead fool. Right? And I'm just crying. And I'm just bawling. And it's like as soon as I feel release in one area. Oh, here comes something else. Here comes something else. Here comes something else. Here comes something else. And that process took me about 30 days, y'all. 30 days he was dealing with me. I couldn't. I was used to at that time. I was used to, and I know this may sound crazy to me. I was used to studying like 8 to 12 hours a day. I spent my days studying. That's it. And I wasn't doing no studying. He was studying me. He was whooping my tail, y'all. I'm telling you. And I got through that process and then down the road, now I'm ready for a wife, right? That's what he said. So Mother Jennifer comes along, and I begrudgingly, because I, I was in such a good place. Y'all know how it is. When you're free from sin, man, you don't want nothing. To, you, don't want nothing to, you don't want nothing to bother you on that. So when, when he brings this beautiful sister, and he talking about sending her a message, I'm like, like, hell, you lying devil. You know, I'm like, that's the devil. trying to, You're trying to get me off course. I just got to a place where I'm free. I ain't doing it. And I, and I believe I rebelled, y'all, for about six months. And then y'all finally got to a point where he said to me, he said, look, if you don't do what I tell you to do, I have no need for you. And I knew exactly what that meant. And y'all see the result. Hey, Mother Jennifer, how are you? <laughs> Reached out, reached out real quick. <laughs> reached out real quick, you know. But then, you know, I met Mother Jennifer one time. We talked uh, Facebook Messenger for one whole month. That's it. She didn't have my number. I have her number. And I said, all right, we good now, and we can exchange numbers. But I was putting all kind of parameters on Mother Jennifer, y'all. I put her through the gauntlet, boy. When she got my number, I said, call me after 7 and find out what happened. Don't call me after 7 o'clock. I don't want none of these late night. Don't call me after 7. Where I'm going, there's no room for sin to go with me. I can't take no sin. I can't do it. Now, mind you, I, it's just me. So I don't have, you know, the council of the elders and all that. I, I'm just hearing y'all and doing what I feel y'all is telling me to do. And she honored it. She said, yes, sir. Never did it. Never, never broke it. So... I'll never forget, it was in August where we, uh, uh, what do you call it, Facebook message for one whole month. In September, we got a chance to talk on the phone before 7 o'clock for one whole month. I told her after that, I said, you're doing pretty good. I'm going to come see you now. She was in Pennsylvania. I was in Georgia, right? So I go up to see her. She convinced me to stay at her home because I was going to get a hotel. But she had a neighbor. She said, I'll go there. Save the money and you just stay in my house. I said, okay. All right. When y'all told me to. At first, I was like, no. And then y'all said, go ahead. And I said, all right, I will. And I'm going to tell you right now, ain't none of that. I forgot something in the middle of the night and showing up. To, she'll tell y'all. I said, don't come back in this. Now, now this is her house. <laughs> don't come back in this house before 8 a.m. You hear me, woman? You come. You make breakfast. You, I'm doing all this stuff, man. And she like, and she like yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Never broke any of that. She tell you, never touched her. Nothing like that. Didn't touch her at all. So I'm leaving, and I load my stuff up in the car. I come back out. Mine's first time I met Mother Jennifer. I go, I give her a hug at the door. I kiss her on the forehead. I said, I touch you now, I hug you now. I gave her a hug, kiss her on the forehead. I said, next time I see him, I'll marry you. And she's like, okay. You know, she's scared in the mug. She's scared. She's so scared. Now, 
Now, I'm going to put this out here so that we can block anybody thinking that they brother Rufus, because that was brother Rufus back then doing that. That wasn't elder, that wasn't pastor, that wasn't a man that came up under this tutelage of Pastor Dial and the straightway saints and been taught how to do this thing. Because I promise you, the state I was in then, none of you could get away with it. I ain't have a place, I ain't have a car, I ain't have a job. Don't even think about it, brothers. Hell no. We, we, we've grown into maturity now. <laughs> <laughs> we got wisdom now. I showed up to marry Mother Jennifer. I didn't have it because I let my place go because I'm moving up there. I gave my, the car came to Syrian, I gave it away. It was an older woman uh, from my hometown. She was struggling getting back forth to work. I told her, son, take the car to your mama. Give it to her. I mean, I'm studying 12 hours a day. What do I need a car for? So I gave the car away. And, of course, I hadn't had no job since I came out of her. I don't think I told you that part. I, I left my job. I had a real good job. Yeah, I was a finance manager. I was a finance manager making real good money. Real good money. But I left all of that, right? So that was October, right? I saw her again in January, and I married her, right? We get married on the Shabbat um, that evening, and we went, consummated our marriage. They got us a hotel room. We come back Sunday morning. Take her, eat breakfast with her parents, take them to the airport. The purging started that night. Me and Mother Jennifer went through 60 days of purging. The stuff I went through in 30 days didn't even come close to what me and Mother Jennifer went through. I'm telling y'all, it was so frightening that me and Mother Jennifer both, we didn't want to go to sleep. And then if we did fall asleep, we didn't even want to wake up. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, it was no joke. But I had so much love for Yah. First and foremost, for trusting me with his daughter. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. I had so much love and respect for him that when she started to tell me every single thing she's ever done in her life, the first thought I had was, wow, y'all, you trust me on this level? He said, I trust your love in me. I said, wow. And the more she told me, the more I grew closer to her because I had that desire to get her free, to get, her set, get these spirits cast out, to cut off all of these ungodly soul ties that have been created in her past. Because remember, remember what I told her. I told her where we're going, which I didn't have no clue where it was, where we're going, we can't take no sin with us. We can't be looking over our shoulders saying, oh man, that's, that's Jimmy from 94, you know, I was, no. That's going to be done, but that's going to be clear. We're going to be free of that. So, if, if we see Jimmy, we may get him saved. <laughs> you know? And that's what y'all took us through for 60 straight days, y'all. And again, y'all see the end result. Bless you, Mother Jennifer. Bless you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's the end result. Now, am I telling you, you have to sit there and listen to every single sin, debauchery, all this, whatever, crime, whatever, that your spouse has done, men? No, may not be your role. But the question I do have for you is, could you handle it? Look at her in her face, knowing that she is not that person anymore. Could you handle it? Could you handle, yeah, hallelujah. Could you handle, listen to me, listen to me. Could you handle hearing about, you met her, let's just give her a fictitious date. You met her on December 1st. Could you handle her telling you stuff she did November 15th? Could you handle it? She's a different person. She didn't tell you that. Y'all told you that. See, don't forget who told me to contact Mother Jennifer. It wasn't her reaching out to me. 
She wasn't doing the online stuff trying to get her a man. It was him saying, yeah, yeah, that's it. Go ahead. I'm like, no, no, you lying devil. Mm -mm, no, mm -mm. she fine in the mug. I ain't doing that. That's what I said. Mm -mm, no. Could you handle that? So before you start, because a lot of y'all do this stuff. Y'all do this. Y'all are here, pass down, pass cord. One of the leaders starts saying certain things, and you think that's you. You think you walk in that level of anointing, and you go around trying to talk to your wife the way you hear one of them talk. And your wife ain't been converted yet. She may slap shit out of you. Then you want to come running to us talking about, man, she's abusive, and she this, she that. But, well, what did you do to provoke that? Now, I'm not making excuses for women. You better not put your damn hands on me, boy. It'll be a whole nother story, boy. What do you call it? Trailways, Pastor? That, that, yeah. We had Greyhound up there, but Trailways, I saw him. I saw him drive. You'd be on one of them. But I'm serious, though. What did you do? Did you protect her? Did you put her in an environment, in a situation where she felt loved, where she felt like she could grow? Did you do that? Or did you put her in a worldly situation where she's constantly being tested, constantly being tried, constantly being provoked to stay that old woman that she's trying to get rid of. Y'all understand what I'm saying? This is the responsibility we have. This is why I stay on you men's heads. I'm staying on y'all. Y'all are the problem. If you lead properly, they will follow. These are the best women in the world. And I'm not saying that to make them feel good. It's just the truth. To be able to come to this uh, uh, male-dominant ministry and to freely submit themselves the way they do, to be the jewels that they are, they need real men that love y'all enough to stay on their face and hear from y'all for what the answer is for your family. Don't try to, y'all hear me say this, one, two, three, ABC, right? That means you're trying to organize it yourself. You're trying to figure it out yourself. Stop that. The Bible says lean not to your own understanding. So why are you still doing it? Some of y'all really got to get delivered to this intellectual spirit too. This intellectual spirit got some of y'all in a chokehold. If you can't fathom it, figure it out with your brain, it ain't right. Whatever happened to faith, though? Whatever happened? You got to, come on, man. We got to get better as brothers. We got to get better as brothers. We do. I'm going to wrap this up because I've been a little long. Um, I'm enjoying my family today. I am. I'm enjoying my family today. Let's go to um, let's go to James. We're almost done. We got a few scriptures left. Let's go to James chapter four. Read verses six through eight, teacher Shane. But Yah gives more grace. Mm. Wherefore he says, Yah resists the proud. Sure do. But gives grace unto the humble. Hallelujah. Submit yourselves therefore to Yah. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to Yah, and he will draw nigh to you. Saints, these are promises. Do y'all understand that? He's giving you instructions to fight this war. If you submit yourself to him, then you'll be able to resist the devil. Some of you wonder why you, you go through this, this religious process you got and nothing's happening. You ain't submitted to Yah. You ain't submitted to Yah. You got an incredible example called Straightway right before you. You don't need Kentucky, Georgia, Alabama, all the other straightways. You got enough right here, really. If you just do what they do, you'll be fine. Guess what, though? That's why we got a Georgia, a Kentucky, a, a, a Missouri, a, a, a Wisconsin, because they follow what we saw. We follow what we saw here. It's a cheat code, y'all. It's a cheat code. You're free to cheat. Because the devil don't care about you. He going to do every conniving thing to get you not to worship Yah. You understand that the fight is a, worship, a fight for worship, right? 
Look what he told Eve. You'll be like a god. The fight is for worship. Now you got one person on this side saying, hey, I'm just, yeah, I'm worthy of worship. I'm worthy of it, and I inhabit it. I love it for my people. You got the other one trying to do everything in his power because he knows, most of you don't, he knows that all I got to do is get them not to worship him, and that means they're automatically worshiping me. Automatically, by default. If you ain't worshiping your creator, you're worshiping me because I control all the other gods. This thing ain't hard, y'all. It's not hard. It's laid out. These are promises. Understand, I could give you a million bucks right now. I could sell it to your account. <laughs> but if you just look at it and you don't do nothing with it, what good is it going to do you? You have to take this ammunition and use it to better yourself and to, be, uh, to stay in his will. Like, I'm having a hard time understanding why we can't get this. I know why. Because we ain't washed in the word. That word being washed is what's going to transform your mind. It's what's going to keep you in the love of Yah. It's what's going to have that hunger and that passion to stay in the face of Yah. To be a lot of spirit to lead and guide you. But if you ain't washed in the word and you, you washed in carnal secular music, you washed in videos or video games or, you know, going to clubs, whatever you're doing. You're doing something carnal that's blocking you from receiving spiritually. But then you want to come out and, and do your little form reading and, and have this form of godliness. But the power has been denied because you don't have a real connection with him. You ain't submitted yourself to Yah. So none of that other promises work for you. You can't keep the first basic thing. Instead, if you submit yourself to Yah, then you can resist the devil. Then the devil will flee from you. And then you watch a plethora of leadership do it. Communities blowing up all over the place. Folk getting set free, out of debt, all this stuff. But you say, I'm a blame shift. Well, you know, it's the environment. They don't have no jobs over here, so I got to stay here. Oh, well, you know, my wife, her, you know, she sprang her toe, and, you know, so I got to care for her. You got all kinds of excuses in the world. Instead of just manning up. When I came out, y'all, I had never in my life worked a minimum wage job, ever. I had my first corporate job at 19, y'all. I'm flying red eyes from Indiana to, to, to Georgia monthly, first class. That's what I was doing at 19. Pastor Dow saw me, said, man, take your black ass back to work, boy. We got time. <laughs> That's what he said. Take, we got time. Go back to work, right? Because I'm thinking, oh, I can't have my social security card in there. I got to get out of the system, right? He said, no, we got time. Go back to work. First job I got was at Walgreens, y'all, stacking shelves at midnight. The dude said, you can make $7.25. I said, huh? He said, $7.25. I looked on the wall. Y'all know they got the little sign up there telling me what minimum wage is, the OSHA required. I said, damn, that's minimum wage. He said, well, that's what it's based. He said, but you're going to get extra quarter, though. You're working at nights. I said, cool, hallelujah. I'll take it. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. And Pastor Dow can testify, I showed up here on Shabbat, and we would fellowship eat, and sometimes I had to be work at 11 o'clock, y'all. We would drive all the way back to Georgia, and I'd go straight to work after being here for service. I was pressing. I wasn't using excuses that, well, I got to go to work, and I need rest. No, I, I figured something out. I figured something out for rest. Now, if any of y'all have figured out how to get that rest, let me know, because I still ain't figured it out all these years. I still don't know how to do it. But I ain't too concerned about it. Y'all giving me the strength. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Teacher, did we finish that? Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Hallelujah. Now, this is what we're going to do. Cause I'm gonna speak. We're going to get out of here because I can kept you all long enough. I have one, two, three, four, five more scriptures. We're going to read these. I'm not going to interrupt him. And... We're going to get to what we are going to be in the end, okay? The, I told y'all, y'all, you want to get up and dance? Enjoy, this is where you can do all that at. Because the restoration is, is, is it's in process. Y'all know that, right? The restoration has begun. And we all need to be restored back to Yah. That place that we were at when Adam got his first command and was told, name this, do that, do that. We're we getting back to that. 
We're going to get back to that place where sin ain't ruling. Hallelujah. You just got to believe that's the expected end. So he's going to read Zephaniah 3. He's going to read Zechariah 2. He's going to read Zechariah 9. He's going to read Isaiah 52. He's just going to boop, 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 back to back. Listen. Faith can increase by hearing the word anyways. Hallelujah. And then we're going to read Isaiah 4 to finish this thing out. Hallelujah. Go ahead, teach. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Yah has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. The king of Israel, even Yah, is in the midst of you. You shall not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear you not, and to Zion, let not your hands be slack. Yahweh, your Elohim, in the midst of you is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict you and I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says Yah. Hallelujah. That's Zephaniah. Go to Zechariah 2. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of you, says Yah, and many nations shall come. Many nations shall be joined to Yah in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of you. And you shall know that the Master of hosts has sent me unto you, and Yah shall inherit Judah, his portion in the Holy Land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Hallelujah. Be silent, O all flesh, before Yah, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Hallelujah. We're going to stay right there and go to chapter 9. We're going to read verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes unto you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Let's go to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. One through nine. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall be no more come into you, the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bands of your neck. O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says Yah, You have sold yourselves for naught, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says Yahweh Elohim, My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, says Yah, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, says Yah. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. 
Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publishes peace, that brings good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that says unto Zion, Elohim reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when Yah shall bring again Zion. Yeah. Break forth into joy. Sing together, yeah. you waste places of Jerusalem. For Yah has comforted His people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to go to Isaiah 4. Because this is where we're going to end up as a people. This is what we're going to look like. Hallelujah. We're going to go to Isaiah 4. We're going to read verses 2 through 4. I'm going to read these, teacher. It says, In that day shall the branch of the master be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the master shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Hallelujah. 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 You are a daughter of Zion. Whether you realize it or not, you are a daughter of Zion. The body is a representation of a daughter of Zion. And I guarantee you, y'all feel like you're part of the body. So when you're out here dealing with the daughters of Zion in any capacity that you're dealing with them as, as your niece, as your daughter, as your wife, it doesn't matter, as your mother, you need to treat them and view them the same way Yah has done with us. And understand and know this is the end result, that beautiful branch that he just talked about in Isaiah. Hallelujah. Bless y'all saints. Love y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we, um, at 2.30, All right, 3 o'clock dinner, okay? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good word, saints, good word. We should all be ready to go into the dead season and kick the dead season ass. Hallelujah. Had three wonderful messages. We should all be going back listening to them. It should be, definitely encourage us going into the dead season. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to lift up holy hands. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we just come before you. We acknowledge you as our king, Father, Yahweh, as our creator, our buckler, and our shield, Father, Yahweh. Father, Yahweh, let us take these words to heart, Father, Yahweh, that are bring forth a performance, Father, Yahweh, as we move forward. Help us to be better men. Help us to be better fathers, better husbands, Father, Yahweh. Help us to be better bride unto you. And let our children just be better sons and daughters. And let our wives be better wives and mothers, Father Yahweh. Help lead us into the dead season, Father Yahweh, to give much freedom, much deliverance, Father Yahweh. Let your spirit be with each and every last person, Father Yahweh, as they go home from this place, Father Yahweh. We're breaking all mechanical fairs, all mechanical breakdowns, binding up all spirits of mischief, causing accidents, that no saints be hindered in their comes and goings. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Look at him looking.